Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of our deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of toy photography. If you caught our last video, you'll remember we delved into the characteristics of light from beautifully soft light to hard shadows. We learned how to control light to create the dramatic effect we want in our toy photography. In today's video, we'll be comparing flash and constant light, different types of modifiers, and I'll break down how I created this shot of my little yellow Danish buddy Darth Lego in detail. Oh, and a quick heads up, I won't bug you to hit the subscribe button just yet. But if you're digging what you see, I might remind you later. Sounds fair? Awesome, let's get into it. Hi everybody, I'm Kirsten Lutz and you're watching Platypod TV, brought to you by Platypod, where innovation never sleeps. So last time we focused on understanding the qualities of light, but today we're getting hands-on. I'll talk about the gear we need to shape and control our light. Ever wondered about the pros and cons of using flash versus constant light, like an LED panel? Well, stick around because I'm about to answer all of those burning questions. So let's dive right in and explore some fantastic light sources you can use to elevate your toy photography game. First up, we've got LED panels like this LumCube Panel Pro. They're a dream for toy photographers because they offer soft, diffused light. Plus, tweaking the brightness and color temperature is a breeze, but just a few adjustments. And the best part? You can switch up the colors without needing a whole set of gels. Super convenient, right? For a more compact option, I'm a big fan of the original Loom Cube. It's like having a mid-sized softbox for your action figures. And it comes with handy magnetic accessories like this diffuser and an orange CTO filter to help you shape that light just the way you want. Don't have any fancy gear? Well, no worries. You can get creative with what you already have at home. A simple desk lamp can do wonders, and even technical flashlights like this one can give you some really cool effects. So don't underestimate the power of everyday lights for your constant light photography. All right, let's shift gears and talk about flash. Many of you might have a speed light tucked away somewhere. Speed lights like this Godox one are super versatile and pack quite a punch. Need more firepower? Well, the Godox 8200 or even the 8400 could be your go-to options. Personally, I lean towards the 8200 for shooting miniatures because it packs a lot of power and comes with a whole bunch of nifty accessories too. But first, let's have a look if using flash or constant light has any discernible impact on your image at all. Here I've created the same photo, first with constant light and then with my speed light. Before we go any further, let's clear one thing up. I might use terms like flash, speed light and strobe interchangeably. I know they're not technically the same, but for our chat today, let's roll with it, okay? Saying that, please do leave a comment down below if you find this video helpful or if you have any questions I can help you with, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get hands on with our gear. I'll be using my trusty Godox Speedlight for flash shots and the LumCube Panel Pro for our constant light setup. To level the playing field, I'm setting the speed light to its lowest power, 1 128th power, and I'm cranking up my shutter speed to 1 200th of a second to knock out any ambient light. We want to focus purely on our light sources here. My light meter gives me an aperture reading of f16. To match that with the Panel Pro even remotely, I'll need to crank the power up to 100%. As you can see, I'm pushing the LED panel to its limit while the speed light is chilling at its lowest setting with plenty of juice to spare. Comparing the shots side by side, they're strikingly similar. So what's going on here? LED panels are compact, budget-friendly and versatile. On the other hand, flashes can be pricier and often require an extra piece of gear like a camera trigger. It's an added cost to keep in mind. One big perk of constant light is that what you see is what you get. You can tweak settings on the fly and you can see changes in real time, which is a huge help, especially when you're starting out in toy photography. Plus with panels like the Panel Pro, you can easily switch up colors without fiddling with gels, which is super handy. But here's where flash shines, pun intended. If you're looking to eliminate ambient light or freeze fast moving subjects like rain or fog, you'll likely need the extra oomph that flashes provide. They also let you use higher shutter speeds without cranking up the ISO, giving you cleaner shots straight out of the bat. So the million dollar question, flash or constant light? Well, it really depends on your shoot. Use what you've got and let your creative needs guide your choice. For me, when shooting portraits, I use flash nearly 100% of the time. But for toy photography, I'm constantly switching between constant light and flash. At the end of the day, it's all about nailing that perfect shot, right? Now, as promised, 
Let's dive into how I captured that epic shot of Lego Darth Vader. I used a total of five lights for this setup, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. To get up close and personal with this tiny Sith Lord, I opted for a 105 macro lens. Now don't worry if you don't have one, I'll be diving deep into lens choices in an upcoming video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. To get the perfect angle though, I positioned my camera slightly lower. To achieve this, I elevated Darth Vader using a roll of gaffer's tape. It's a simple trick, but it does do the job. The key light is our trusty Panel Pro, placed in front and slightly to the left of Darth, dialed down to 25% to give that dark, mysterious vibe. To mimic the iconic red glow of Darth Vader's lightsaber, I used another Panel Pro on the left set to red. To make Darth Vader pop from the background, I added a loom cube behind his left side serving as a kicker light. And for that dramatic edge light on his right, I used a tactical flashlight. This flashlight casts a cool blue hue, creating a striking color contrast against the warm red glow. But I felt like we needed a bit more light on Darth's right side. That's why I added another loom cube with a diffuser on a flexible gooseneck. That's super handy for tweaking the light placement just right. And voila, that's how we got our shot. Now one challenge you might face when shooting tiny subjects like Lego figures is nailing the depth of field. Getting everything sharp from front to back can be tricky. But no worries, in the next video I'll share some simple tips to ensure your toy photos are sharp and crisp throughout. Trust me, you won't want to miss that one. And there you have it folks, I hope this video helps you on your photography journey and please do leave a comment down below, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Also, I highly recommend you check out my buddy Dave DeBearmaker's latest book, From a Certain Point of View, The Ultimate Guide on Miniature Photography. It really is a treasure trove of knowledge from one of the best. Now, if you want to learn more about toy photography, check out my podcast, The Camera Shake Podcast, where I've talked to toy photography pros Dave DeBearmaker and Jesse Fireisen in detail about how they create their amazing images. And if you're not yet following the Camera Shake Podcast, then what are you doing? Check it out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever awesome podcasts live. You'll find all the links in the description. As always, take a snapshot of your setup or share your final shots on Instagram. If you've been experimenting with Platybook gear or you're trying out the lighting setups we've discussed today, I want to see your creations. Make sure you tag Platypod on Instagram and use the hashtag PostMyPlatypod. If you like this video, we have a button specifically for you right here. Join the community over on Facebook to see what other Platypod users are up to and ring that bell so you don't miss our regular videos. That, my friends, is all for today. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.